So what's not to love about these things, eh? This is a speaker. Now, they're really easy to find. Actually, I have hundreds of them because I keep coming across them. And they always have this thing in here, which is a ceramic magnet. Now, if you knock that off, which is quite easy to do, you get these things. They're always polarised north-south on the faces, actually. So that's north, that's south. And they're just beautiful. The problem is, obviously, what to do with them. So when you get that off, you want the metal plates off. To get the metal plates off, you basically stick a thin-bladed screwdriver in there and whack it with a hammer, because they're just glued on. But they're also held on by the magnetic attraction, so they are a little tough to get off. But a little bit of persistence and some gentle persuasion, and they'll come off. When you have a disc like that, and then the other side, you have a disc with this great big lump of metal. But more importantly, it's got a dimple right there in the centre. So that little dimple, I drilled it out with an 8mm drill bit and stuck a bit of 8mm bar down there, and it's a nice tight fit. Now, I did stick this in the lathe to turn it, but it was pretty true, actually. It doesn't take much turning at all. So if you don't have a lathe, just drilling it and whacking a bit of 8mm bar will do it. And, of course, the magnet fits beautifully on there and is nice and centred. So we get our little rotor all centred up. Now what we need to do is put some L brackets on here coming down there and we need eight of them and the L brackets I'm going to make out of this bit of one centimetre steel and they'll go on like that and bend over to cover that bit of the magnet and there'll only be four aside and that will give us eight poles. So all I've done to those magnet plates is weld on those little angle stubs. Now you can screw them on I just like welding things. So I weld on those angle stubs and I've put the magnet back in. Now these ones point this way and these ones go on like that, pointing the other way. And what we've done is twist the field around, so now we have north, south, north, south. And there's the rotor finished. Now we can see what we've done with the help of these two other speaker magnets and a compass. If I hold the speaker magnet like that, we can see it's pointing to south, flip it round, no hesitation, points to north. If I hold it like that, though, and follow it around, not a lot happens apart from I'm possibly ruining that magnet. If I do that and follow it around, the north follows the north, and the south follows the south. And obviously that's because that's the south face, that's the north face, and here it's all a bit confused. What we've done here with these bends of steel is direct or bend that magnetic field. So now, if I hold that there, we get a straight north, then we get a straight south, then we get... <laughs> <laughs> straight north and uh, south and so on. So we've bent the magnetic fields to these poles. So now we have north, south, north, south pointing at the edge. Okay, so I've lashed it up in this Heath Robinson arrangement with a few lab stands and I've wound some coils and put them in this Y configuration. There's one back here. And they're 120 degrees apart. I mean, we've got eight poles. So we're going to need like three, six, nine, twelve, something like that. Now, like this, it is a bit power hungry, so I've got it on a 30 amp electronic speed controller and we're going to turn it on in a second, of course, but I'm not really that interested in the efficiency, I just want to see the thing work. So if I twiddle the potentiometer a bit... And there it goes. That's awesome, actually. Okay, so it is more than possible to turn a speaker into a brushless DC motor. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching.